There is a benefit to being busy. It makes it harder to find time to cry. Even when around you, reasons are piling up. For the men and women of Ukraine's rail system, it has been a year of focusing on the work. Whether they've been rebuilding tracks, riding the tracks, or getting people to the right tracks. Leonid Leboyko is the director of Kyiv's central station. Busy helps people cope, he says. And then he tells the story of a train driver whose wife was killed by Russian troops. Now, a train's job is to move forward. Well, the workers who keep Ukraine's trains rolling seem to have the same degree of dedication to the same direction. Driving his train through land retaken by Ukraine's military, Roman Shapoval knows Russian forces aren't far. He just doesn't have time for fear. Семьи проживают наші родні, близькі проживають за нас. Ми проживаємо за пасажири, які ззаді веземось. There have been trips conductor Lilia Semenova didn't think she'd make it through. There was one where she called her family to say goodbye another where she thought she'd die before she could even make that call. After a year keeping Ukraine's trains running through a war, the men and women of the country's rail service have earned new names. They've been called the Iron People and Ukraine's Second Army, a force of 230,000 people. Well, this is their general. Alexander Komishin took over as head of the rail service just seven months before the invasion. He was a finance guy. He was supposed to work on modernizing the company. Instead, he's been attending funerals. He won't say how many. We lost more than 300 railway men and more than 700 are injured. But meanwhile, we keep standing and we will withstand. The rail service was important before the invasion, but crucial since. With roads and bridges bombed and air travel impossible, much of the country is cut off to everything but rail lines. They have become lifelines. In the early days of the invasion, the focus was on evacuations. Trains went wherever they could reach, carrying humanitarian aid into conflict zones and people out. 3.8 million refugees were moved mostly to safer areas in the West. Lilia says some trains were so packed there was no space to move. It was chaotic and tragic, she says. People were leaving their homes not knowing where they were going, only that they couldn't stay. That period is a blur. Shifts lasted days, the staff even went without food. Lilia remembers a trip out of the east where there was fighting ahead of them. And they didn't know how they'd make it through. This was one of the worst days for the rail service, April 8th. A Russian missile hit the railway station in Kramatorsk. 60 people were killed, including seven children. Lilia had just gotten out on a train carrying about 5,000 people. She says they were full and had left thousands behind. 
И мы все плакали. Мы плакали и, сме... и не то, что смеялись, а мы были рады, что вот какой-то ангел у нас, знаете, вот вывез оттуда. Now, in the beginning, Russian forces, for the most part, left rail infrastructure alone. The thinking was, once Russia took over, it would use the tracks for its own supply lines. Well, the pushback changed that playbook. Ukrainian military says Russian forces target rail lines. This was a still unconfirmed attack by Marine drone this month on a bridge outside Odessa. The goal would have been to cut off weapon shipments from NATO countries by Ukrainian railways. Alexander won't discuss how the rail service works with the military, but that they're close isn't a secret. It's something I never commented since the beginning of the war, but it doesn't mean, like, you know everything. Keeping Ukrainian industry going and keeping the country going means moving raw materials in and finished products out. It's also meant redirecting millions of tons of grain and corn through new routes to European ports. In many cases, train stations have now become emergency shelters for Ukrainians who have no water, electricity, or homes after an attack. And there is also a new term, iron diplomacy. Every world leader and every celebrity who's visited Kyiv went in and out by Ukrainian train. I really want to take a moment to say thank you to all the railway workers of Ukraine. For 12 months, the Russian attacks have been keeping repair crews busy. And those crews have gotten quicker. Jobs that used to take a week now take a day. Time out in the open means time potentially exposed to shelling. They don't flinch at bombs off in the distance anymore, although they do worry about booby traps. Alexander has been with crews on jobs when workers were killed. He doesn't spend a lot of time in the office. He's in and out of hotspots by train, he says, to send a message. He'd never ask anyone to go somewhere he wouldn't go himself. Alexander also made senior managers pick who would replace them if they're killed. He says no person is more important than keeping the trains running. The rail system saved millions of people. That's why it's definitely more important than me. That is a sentiment shared seemingly across the board. Every rail worker we spoke to said duty outweighs danger. When I meet railway men, I always shake their hand and say something like, thank you for what you do. You are doing heroic work. And you know what they say? They usually say, come on, we're just doing what we have to do. We're just doing our job. Now, Alexander admits there are moments where the pressure is overwhelming. It's been a tough year spent without his family. For their safety, they were sent out of the country. That's the highest price I am personally paying for this war, not seeing my boys. I've got two boys, I've got two sons. I really miss them. As Ukrainian troops retake territories from Russian forces, the motto is, first the tanks go in, then the trains. It's Ukraine's rail workers that reconnect the land and the people with the rest of the country. Generators are moved into the station, then food, heat, and the internet. The trains that roll down these tracks to liberated towns and cities carry comfort and communications, and in many ways, confidence. У меня перед глазами почему-то такая картина, знаете, как хирург лежит, ну, оперирует тело, да, собирает по кускам, да, там, вот, допустим, ну, вот в нашей ситуации мы смотрим, он то шил, то шил, то шил, и человек живет. Они сюда больше не приедут, кто уезжал, а когда побачили, что работают вандеры, колеи, работники, постачания, то зрозуміли, что можно повертатися, и мы вселили в них надежду.